Previously on the bill. Easy, Tiger. You never know who's in the corridors. You're in the army, then? Yeah, left five years ago. Decided to join another institution for some reason. I end up sleeping with as many women as I can. I'm so sorry, it was unfeasible. I forgive you. Are you with him? He's my husband. What's your name? Esther Stenton. And your husband? Pete. Peter Stenton. Oh. Say his name again? Peter Stenton. What is it, Di? Nothing. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Stenning. I'm PC Harmon. This is PC Noble from Sunhill. Hello, Diane. Pete. I would ask how you are, but given the circumstances. <laughs> you two know each other? Yeah, the army. I heard you left. Oh, Sierra Leone was my last posting. I've been out nearly 18 months now. It must be over four years since you left. Oh, you two must have loads to catch up on. Yeah, shall we uh, get on? So, uh, what rank were you? A sergeant. Mm -hmm. So, what happened? Popped out to buy a paper. Next thing I know, wallop, I'm on the ground. Did you see your attacker? No, he must have come at me from behind. Really? That cut would indicate someone attacked you from head on. Well, he can't have done, otherwise I would have seen him. Did your attacker take anything? Oh, yeah, my wallet. Your wife was with you when we got there? Yeah, she must have found me on her way to college. It was only a few yards away from our place. Well, we'll need to speak to her. Where is she? She's uh, gone home and picked me up my new shirt. So what are you up to these days? Uh, bits and pieces. A bit of security. That kind of thing. I'm trying to work out what it is I want to do. You know, it's nice not being told after all those years. Thanks. We'll pop back later. You're welcome, PC Noble. PC Armin. Cheers. Oh dear. You had two hours extra sleep with me, and yet you're still yawning. I didn't even know you go. No, I know. I tried banging around a bit, but nothing. Thanks. All units from Sierra Oscar. Look, a fire I thought girls are supposed to be better at food shopping anyway. I found two half-empty cans of milk in your fridge and they were more than a month out of date. I'm sorry. I'll catch you later. So you're asking for five, four, three shots, dealing. Have fun. You know what I say? I expect that fine, then. Right, thanks for doing that, Paul. You've got the fax number, yeah? OK, I'll speak to you later. Bye. Nobody saw anything. No, there's no CCTV cameras outside either. Well, there's a couple of cameras on Mercy Street. They'll be worth looking out. Mrs. Stunning, can we come in for a few minutes, please? Oh, I was just on my way back to St. Hughes. It, it wouldn't take long. No, just a few questions. Thanks. So, can you tell us what happened this morning? Pete went out probably five minutes before headed out to college. And what time was that? About 3.40. When I left the building, I saw him on the pavement unconscious. Called me an island. You didn't happen to see anybody else around, did you? No. Was that Pete's? He told us it was stolen. He had the batch that Bram went to. That one's just a smart occasion. How long have you been married? I used to work with Pete. Ex-army. 
We met when he was out in Sierra Leone, where I'm from. We got married after only a few months. It's romantic. He was. A proper whirlwind. I always thought I was far too sensible to get carried away by a tall web. You can never tell how you're going to behave when you meet the right one, though. Well, I guess you're still in that honeymoon period. Yeah. It's fantastic. Well, all right. What's the details? Have you spoken to the owner? Yeah, it's a Don Chardlo. He's gone to the hospital with his son. How is he? He was in house and smoke. Forensics say there's a strong smell of petrol with two separate seats of fire, so it's uh, looking like arson. They called the fire brigade. A uh, teenage lad, apparently. Did Mr. Chardlo have any idea who might have started it? Well, he didn't really hang around, to be honest. How old's your son? 14, 15. That could have been him. Possibility, playing with fire, got out of hand, called the fire brigade, maybe. Maybe. Let's go back in. What is wrong? I just don't think things are as rosy as she's making out. How do you mean? They're perfect marriage. It's just too rehearsed. I'm not convinced. I think she's lying. Are you mad? She's left out. Look at her. She's young. She's beautiful. She's intelligent. Mm -hmm. She certainly made an impression on you. He's not exactly in the same league, is he? She could do loads better. You're really not a fan, are you? It's not that. What is it then? Why are you so worried about Esther? Station and take it from there. Yeah. Okay. Right, mate. You alright? Yeah. We found a petrol can down there. Where? Just in between the two blocks of flats. I think the top of it's wet. So we've got FIU coming down. They're gonna take a photo. Check for some prints. Oh, right, nice one. It's good we really like your theory about the son of an accident. Looks like we need to go and have another word with Don, doesn't it? Could be a targeted attack. Nice one, Will. Thanks. Alright, yeah. right, gorgeous. We've been fighting fire all morning. What have you been doing? Not a lot. you didn't burst into flames yourself with all that gel. I'm gonna shut it, you. So what's the matter with you? Diane. Why? Well, I'm not being funny, and I don't have a problem with it, but... I think she might bat for the other side. <laughs> Why'd you say that? I think she's got a thing for this girl, Esther. The wife of the guy that was beaten up this morning. She's convinced she's unhappy and needs saving. It's weird. She goes on and on about how pretty she is and that she can do much better. What does it matter if she is? No, I'm not bothered. I'm just saying I don't want her feelings for the woman clouding her judgement. So she, you know, tried it on with you yet? No. I, I'm, I'm just saying, if she did, it's something I'd like to see. No, you wouldn't even know I was in the room. Little boys and their little fantasies. Tip it. I just need to check something. I'll see you in the canteen in two minutes. Is this yours? Do you want to tell me why the army is sending you discharge papers for Sergeant Peter Stenham? Uh, I used to work with him at the training centre in Hertfordshire. And? Well, he was beaten up this morning. Me and Honey are looking into it. So he's the victim of an assault and you're looking into when and why he was discharged from the army? I don't get it. He says he didn't see his attacker, but the injuries indicated that he was attacked head on, so I just think he's hiding something. Like what? I don't know. But knowing Pete, he probably left the army under a cloud. So? Look, what's your problem with him? I'll put money on there being more to this than meets the eye. He'll have deserved it. Trust me. He used to make the trainees' lives hell. So, I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't have a list of people with a grudge against him. And I'm not trying to exact revenge. I'm just trying to find out a bit more. And the fact that I know him can only help this investigation. I'm not sure you should be on. Oh, look, please, Sarge. I won't let anything sway my judgment, I swear. He's the victim. I know. I promise. I'll be keeping an eye on you. You haven't got any idea who might have done this. Look, look, we don't make any trouble around the estate or anything. What about Cameron? No, he's not like that. He keeps himself out of trouble as well. well why wasn't he at school? Look, don't get all social services on me. He's never out of school. He must have come home ill or something. I mean, he's not a bad kid. I mean, seriously, don't go pointing the finger at Cam. So you reckon it was a random arson attack? They're pretty rare, you know. 
you don't know what our estate's like, do you? I mean, nobody cares anymore. I mean, the whole estate's being demolished and rebuilt. Look, I'm sorry, guys, but I really don't know who or why. Isn't that your job? Looks like we've got a fun trawl through CCTV tapes. You think that corner shut down the side of Don's flat might cause something? Could have done. Yeah. Mm. Listen, it's likely that whoever started this fire would have walked past your shop, so I was... Sorry, miss. So I was wondering if we could have a look at your CCTV tapes. No tapes in them. Why? No point! Not many left on the estate, and those that are no better into mess with me. I knew something like this would happen sooner or later. Why? Why? I'll tell you why. Because we are smaller than they are. Or you can kick and scream all you like, but it's like peeing into a gale force wind. Who are they? They? Come here, I'll show you. They are the construction company. Money-grabbing weasels that are trying to kick us out. What, you think they started the fire? No, I bet you all them scratches in there they did. Oh, the lot round here don't give a monkeys. But Don does. You stand up and be counted and you end up with a burnt gaff. But why would the construction company go to such extremes? Well, they're fed up with us, aren't they? Huh? Me, Don and a few of the others that don't want to move. They're trying to scare us off. Oh, I've been in touch with the press. Trying to make people aware of what they're doing to our community. But it's got me absolutely nowhere. I have lived on this estate for 37 years. I am going nowhere. Well, Maggie, we have to investigate all angles. Now, has Don had any problems with anyone lately? No, no, he's too sensible, that one. Looks out for himself and his son by keeping his head down. No, 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 he's not to blame. If anyone's to blame, it's that step over or whatever that company's called. Darren! You better pay for that or I'll have your knackers for earrings. That's why I don't need no CCTV. Who do they know you're a ball breaking copper? I could be a ball breaking and a sex object, can't I? Mr. Taunton. Uh, Winston. Winston. Uh, I'm DC Webb. This is DC Walker from Sun Hill. Hi. I need to ask you a couple of questions about the contract you got on the Oldbourne estate. Oh, wish you hadn't taken it now. Having good trouble. Yeah, the Oh, let me guess. The head of that residence uh, protest group, what's her name? Maud? Maggie? She said something. We're investigating a fire at one of the flats in the estate. Your company's been accused of intimidating some of the residents here. It's the other way round. We're the ones being intimidated. All right, back to work. Look, we've had machinery vandalised, equipment nipped, you name it. Have you reported it? No, I did the first few times. Uh, but we didn't come to nothing, you know. We couldn't prove that the residence group were responsible. Surely you got to report it to claim on your insurance. <laughs> If I claimed everything, my premiums would be sky high. Why would we set a fire at a property we're about to work on? She's barking, that one. It's the property developer she should be targeting. We're just contractors. Yes. No. I checked the CCTV and this car was seen pulling into Esther's Road just moments before the time of Pete's attack. It's a long shot, but I think it's worth looking at. Mm. Hello, ladies. All right, well. Oh, well, leave her alone. What you got? Uh, well, according to this, Maggie received a caution under Section 5 of the Public Order Act on the 8th of November 2006. Two other complaints of vandalism and theft, but no charges brought. Well done. Sounds like Winston was right about who's bullying who. I know I wouldn't like to get on the wrong side of Maggie Pryor. Mm. Maggie Pryor? It's a name that sends shudders down the spine. Why? The Daily News got in touch with me. She's uh, got it in for the police and the lack of support we're giving her resident protest group. I'm just off to see Jack now and put a report together saying that we do take the concerns of the community very seriously. Right, um, let's take a look at Don if it's not the construction company and see who else has it in for him. Feeling any better? Yeah, um, sorry as well about last night. My head was banging. Well, I'll try not to take it too personally. Mm. Well, we'll do it again soon, yeah? Great. Cool. How's it going? Fine. I'm your sergeant. I'm interested in the progression of a serious assault case. We found a PNC on a car that was spotted in the area. It belongs to an Ashley Sinclair. He's a lecturer at the Thames Academy. That's where the victim's wife, Esther, studies. Good. Keep up the good work. What's that about? Nothing. I wonder what Ashley's problem is with Pete. Maybe he doesn't have one. 
Maybe Ashley's a friend of Esther's or a lover. Or maybe he knows something about Pete. Knows that he's been giving Esther a hard time and he went round to give him something to think about. Let's go and have a chat with him. You are joking. You've got nothing to base that on. Go for us. Call you later. Good day. Hello again. Are you looking for me? Uh, no, we're looking for a possible witness to your husband's attack. From here? Who? We can't say. Is this Ashley Sinclair? It's just... He was probably waiting for me down our road this morning. He gives me a lift most days. He's on his way. That was just him. Why doesn't he pick you up from your place? It's tricky turning our road and I don't like taking him too far out of his way. Plus you don't need Pete getting paranoid about what his new wife's up to with her teacher. Silly, really. I don't know why Pete's so insecure. If you need to talk about anything, anything at all, then you can. Just give me a call, yeah? Thank you. I better go. What? You treated Pete like a suspect from the start. He's the victim. I doubt that very much. Pete is not one of life's victims. You see how under the thumb she was? I bet she wishes she'd never left Sierra Leone now. You've completely lost it. Let's go and find Ashley. Hiya. Hey. How's it going with the arson? Hmm. Slowly. Shall I? Yeah. Probably going to be a late night then. Yeah, probably. Oh well. At least you haven't made any plans. Have you? Yeah, no, I suppose not. Catch you later then. Yeah. Listen, um, we could grab a coffee later on if you like. Coffee? Yeah. Great. See you later. Honestly, coffee. What? She was after more than coffee. Really? Well, I'm taking it nice and slow there. I've already messed that up once before. You want to be careful that your nice and slowly doesn't come across as not interested. Look, I've got a list of residents from the Oldbourne estate who've put their names down to be rehoused, and guess who's on there? Maggie. Don't be stupid. They'd have to drag her kicking and screaming. It's Don. Ah. Maggie will be gutted. She was convinced he was on her side. Or maybe she knows he's a turncoat and she started the fire. Could be, but I think her support for Don this morning was genuine. You reckon? Yeah. Hello? Yep. You're joking. OK, 101. That was Winston. There's a disturbance at the construction site. An old woman. Oh, I wonder who that could be. How long has she been here? I told you she's mad! Maggie! Turn it off! I'm afraid, You're at 15 minutes! Right. One of the guys trying to get her. Turn it off! She's out! She's going to put you out of business! She's going to ruin everything! Mind your back, mind your back. Stay back. Maggie! wasn't a good idea, was it? We're not kicking me out of my home! Maggie, they're the contractors, OK? It ain't their fault. Well, they could have refused the job. I mean, they're just as much to blame as the council. You know what I'm going to have to do now, don't you? Maggie Pryor, I'm arresting you for criminal damage and stealing a motor vehicle without consent. You do not have to say anything, but the your defence, if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court, anything you do say may be given in evidence. You mad old bitch! Look what you've done! <laughs> I'd do it all over again. If Mr Taunton proceeds to prosecute, you could be facing a stretch inside, you know that? Don's a neighbour. Should we all sit back and let Mr Taunton and that lot burn us alive? Don's boy could have died. There's no evidence to suggest that the construction company had anything to do with the fire. No evidence, because he's too clever for you lot more like... In fact, someone like you might have more to gain from doing it. Make out like it was the construction firm. I wouldn't torch Don's place. He's one of us. He's not, though. We found out that his name's on the list for rehousing. I mean, this could have been an act of revenge for letting you down and turning against you. But... He came to my meetings. I used to babysit for Cam. I still cook the odd meal for him when Don's awake. I've always looked out for both of them. 
He's probably just looking out for Cameron's best interest. The old boy's not a great place for a teenage lad to be. I would never torch Don's home. It's tempting, though. Now I know what he's been up to. I couldn't do that to Cam. It's not his fault his dad's a weasel. You really didn't know that he'd signed for rehousing? No. He'll wish he never had, let me tell you. But as for me being behind the fire, I'm not that crazy. You were caught joyriding a digger. Yeah. Well, sounds a bit mad when you put it like that. Yeah. Yeah. The interview suspended at two o'clock. What's up? Okay, so, cheers. Uh, that was Will on the phone from St Hughes. Cameron's okay to talk. I was there at about quarter to nine. I, I waited for five minutes and I had to leave, otherwise I would have been late. You didn't call, you just drove off. Well, I didn't have a number on me. Do many of your students get the chauffeur service, Mr Sinclair? She's a friend. We get on well, we have the odd coffee. She's older than most of my other students. You've met her, yeah? Well, you know what she's like. She's bright, interesting. She's a friend. What's this about? What's happened? Is Esther OK? Esther's husband, Pete, was a victim of a nasty assault early this morning outside his home. I didn't know. Oh, you don't think I had anything to do with it? Why would I? I don't know the man. Does he know you give Esther lifts? I don't know what he knows. Excuse me. Look, I haven't got anything to hide. We're just friends. Sorry, I have a class. OK, well, thanks. You've been very helpful. Thank you. What a load of bull. It's obvious he's having an affair with Esther. Pete's found out, gone to give him what for and come off worse. I've had enough of this. Mrs Sinclair doesn't seem like the kind of guy that would lie to us. He's as straight as they come. You ought to open your eyes. My eyes are open. Pete is hiding something. He's got a hold over Esther and she's too scared to stand up to him. I'm going to talk to Pete and find out what the hell is going on. Well, actually, I'd like to know what the hell's going on. What do you mean? You've obviously got issues with Pete because you're acting like a lunatic. Excuse me? Pete seems like a nice guy. From what I can see, it's more your problem than his. Hello, Pete. Is it all right if we talk to him? Is Esther not coming to pick you up? I would have thought she'd been worried about you. I can make my own way home. I'm fine now. I know you, Pete. Drop the act. Who attacked you? I said, I don't know. Do you know somebody called Ashley Sinclair? Yeah, he's one of Esther's tutors. Why? Things as rosy with Esther as you made out. Not worried that the honeymoon's over. Right, stop right there. I've had enough of your snide comments and insinuations. You've had me pegged as the bad guy from the start. I was attacked, remember? I am the victim. I know we've had our moments in the past, but you have got to give me a break. Did you really go and get a paper this morning? Or were you on your way to have it out with Ashley? What are you talking about? Don't pretend you don't know Esther's got a thing going with him. Diane! Oh, I didn't know for sure. And neither does she. I've had my suspicions. She talks about him constantly. I thought it was just my paranoia. I thought I'd give her some time to, you know, to realise... or to remember why it was she married me. Look, don't give up on her just yet, because nobody knows anything for sure. I do. Can you get us some coffees? Yeah. I'm surprised you let someone get the better of you. Back then, you knew who to pick on. The young, the homesick ones, the weak ones. So that's what today's really been about. I didn't pick on anyone. We used standard army tactics. It helped toughen them up. Our job was to make them into soldiers, good soldiers. 
And we had to be hard sometimes. You were too. Yeah, I might have been tough, but at least I was fair. I didn't single anybody out. You targeted individuals and you kept going. We all did. No, you went too far. And I'm not responsible for anyone killing themselves. You can't pin that on me. I remember seeing Andy the day before he topped himself. He was already dead. You'd reduced him to that. A soldier committed suicide and it's your fault. made a good soldier with the right encouragement. He was hungry for it when he arrived. Private Monroe was failing miserably. He would have been a liability to himself and his regiment. You undermined his confidence. You made him a liability. I saw you make him drop and do 50 in a pile of cowcrap. Those cow punishments were standard. Don't try and make out that you were a soft touch. I was there, remember? I didn't go as far as you. I had limits. So you're telling me you had no part of playing Don't at all? Don't throw this back at me. It was not my fault. Yeah, that's right. You keep telling yourself that. You? you shouldn't have. What's the matter with you? She's still doing your head in. I'm gonna knock her out. Hey, listen, I'll tell what you need. You need a big night out. Ooh, that sounds very tempting. What have you got in mind? Hi, Cameron. I'm DC Walker. This is DC Webb. Hey, Cameron. Good to see you looking all right, not too singed. Do you mind putting that down for a second? This won't take long. Cam. Yeah. Can you tell me what you were doing at home at 9.30 this morning? It's all right, just tell him. Double maths. I gave you a lift. Did you just turn around the minute I drove off? Well, I registered and then I did a bunk. Oh, great. Well, you should be grateful. I mean, if I didn't come home when I did, the whole place would have burnt down. Look, you're not getting any awards for skiving. The fire already started when you arrived. Why didn't you just call the fire brigade? Why did you go in? I did call the fire brigade, actually. But the fire wasn't that bad, so I thought I'd get a few things out while I could. Oh. But I got your laptop out, didn't I? Can you remember what happened while you didn't make it out? Well, about the third time I went in, the smoke got a lot worse. I mean, a lot thicker. And I don't really remember much after that. Do you remember anyone hanging around when you arrived? Were you on your own? I'd gone home to wait for Bradley. Oh, oh, I see. So this was his idea, was it, to bunk? I do have my own brain, Dad. Look, how many times do I have to tell you to stay away from him? Look, what's happened? If you'd have been at school, you wouldn't be here now, would you? Well, maybe she just fancies you. She's just overcompensating by being a bitch. <laughs> Not your fault you're so sexy, is it? Put her down, Will. Look, we've got to go. Apparently, Ashley Sinclair is waiting to see us at the station. Good luck. I attack Pete Stenning. I'm sorry that I lied to you before. I hit him over the head and I drove off. Why have you decided to come forward now? I knew he'd be found out sooner or later. Why did you attack him? Did he find you? Or did you find him? He came after me. He was shouting. Arms everywhere. So the attack was in self-defence? What P.C. Noble meant to say was... What happened next? It was self-defence. He went for me. I panicked. I, I hit him over the head. I'm not normally a violent man. What did you hit him with? A stone. I picked up the closest thing to me. Well, that's strange. We didn't find anything lying around. I threw it in the front garden further along. So what is Pete's problem with you? He thinks I'm having an affair with Esther. How long has it been going on? It's not an affair. It's more than that. She's going to leave him. They've not been married long. Yeah, I know. So, would you be able to show us where you've discarded this stone? I could try, but I can't promise anything. I was in a bit of a state. You OK? I just don't know what to do with him. You know, I thought I'd got through the worst of it. Well, he, he was a nightmare when he was 13, but it was nothing compared to this. It's just the two of you. But, uh, I hardly see him now. He's, he's always with Bradley Kendall. What's so bad about Bradley? Oh, he's dodgy. You know, he's always got the latest of everything. DVDs, mobile phones, you name it. It's hot, all of it. He's only 15. He's already been arrested five times for burglary and robbery. 
I just don't want Cam hanging around with him. I've tried everything. I've, 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 I've tried saying nothing. I've tried grounding him. But I've even tried talking to Bradley. You know, Cam is a bright kid. <laughs> he could do a lot better than I have. I mean, at this rate, he's just... He's just going to end up like half the other kids on that estate, just unemployed and on drugs. I need to get him away from it all. I'm sorry. It's not your problem. No, it's okay. What is your problem? It's obvious Ashley's lying. He's Mr. Honest, remember? That's what you were saying earlier. He's a teacher for crying out loud. Well, maybe he's trying to protect Esther. But she could have hit Pete. It's obvious things aren't right between them at the moment. It's her we should be talking to. Look, whatever your problem is with Pete, you're letting it affect your judgement. He seems like a decent guy to me. Oh, he's got you well and truly fooled, hasn't he? Has he flashed that smile of his at you a few times? You know, you really shouldn't be working on this, because you've had it in for people. Excuse me, ladies. Do you mind speaking up a bit? Because my aunt in North London can't quite hear you. A word. Get a cup of tea. Off you go. I thought you said you were going to stay objective. I have. Well, it doesn't sound like it to me. It sounds like Honey's worried about your judgement too. Not being harsh, but she's a bit of a soft touch. She is a good officer. So what's your beef with Pete Stenning? You've obviously got one, otherwise you wouldn't have your knickers in such a twist. He's the kind of guy that made me want to leave the army. He's a nasty piece of work. He's a real bully. Oh, come on. All of you instructors were hard. You pushed us all around during training. No, not the normal type. He went further. He picked on someone and he wouldn't let it rest. Did you report him? You know what it's like. It's hard to tell when something's army and when it's gone too far. Especially when you're in it day and night. You stop knowing or noticing the grey areas. Anyway, I was hard on the lads too, but I was not like Pete. I never went that far. I could have done more though. And if I had, we might not have lost him. Private Monroe. Seventeen-year-old lad. He gave up. There were a lot of dropouts during training. No. He hanged himself. I thought I'd got all this in the past. I thought I'd sorted it all out of my head. Then I saw Pete. You can't blame yourself. Yeah, I can. I could have done more and been less of a sheep. But that is what the army is all about, being a sheep. I confiscated his photograph album. Pictures of his family. I was just trying to toughen him up, shake the homesickness out of him. He was found dead the next day in the changing rooms. It wasn't just Pete's bullying that made him do it. It was me as well. Now's your chance. Give a more exciting offer than coffee this time, will you? Yeah, go on. Uh, Mia, um, there's a good chance I can get off on time tonight, so I wonder if you still want to meet up. Yeah, that should be fine. Six o'clock, say, out of front. Great. Where are we going? Oh, to the pub, then for curry, and then drinking some lager. Definitely no coffee nonsense this time. See you later. Oh, it. Classy. Oh, I've got something else up my sleeve. It's just. Well, let's hope this unappealing offer doesn't send a runner for the hills. Hello? Yes, speaking. Don Shardlow. Yeah, okay, yeah, thanks. Don Shardlow's prints all over the can. Well, he said he was desperate to get Cameron away from the estate, but. Look, let's go pick him up and I'll do the interview alone. Let you get off for your night of romance. Ah. Don, we just got fingerprints back from the can of petrol. Um, not in front of Cam, please. Well, what's going on? Look, why don't you start our mates tonight? Why? Where are you going? Cam, it was, um... It was me that started the fire, mate. You? 
I wanted to get us a place at, at Sycamore House, you know, that new development in Kent. You did it. But there, there wasn't many places left, mate. I didn't want us to mess out. I, I needed to get you away from the old bomb. You mean Bradley? Yeah. That was our home, Dad. I know. What's going to happen? He's not going to prison, is he? Well, arson's a very serious offence. It's all my fault. No, Cameron, it's not. It's my fault. Losing Mum was bad enough. And you said you'd always be there for me. I will, mate. You can't be there for me if you're locked up, though, can you? I will, mate. Why did you do it, Dad? No. <laughs> How much longer do you think Ashley will be? Well, you're going to be waiting a while. He was the last person I would have suspected. How much trouble is he in? GBH. He could get a custodial. Why did he do it? I don't know. Really? See, I don't think he did do it. I think he was taking the rap for somebody else. I'm not sure I'd do that for anybody, no matter how much I loved them. You know, don't you? I wasn't going to let anybody get hurt. I, I stood around the back waiting for it to take, and then I was going to call 999. I didn't know Cam had gone in. I, I didn't even know he was there. I thought he was at school. Fires aren't easy to control, especially in blocks like yours. Oh, I've really messed up. I've let Cam down, myself, Maggie. I wanted to tell her that we was moving, but I, I was too ashamed. I knew she'd be gutted. She must hate me. She doesn't. She knows you put your son first. <laughs> Not much use to him from the inside, though, am I? Don't sentence yourself. We don't know yet. He told me that he won't let me leave him. Said he'd... Lock me up for the rest of my life if he had to. He looked like a different man. I was scared. Really scared. I managed to get out of his grip and I ran. He came after me and I panicked. I something from the floor and I smashed it against his head. I thought I killed him. I can't leave him now, can I? I've already ruined his life enough. Do you love Ashley? I don't know if I've ever loved anyone else. He's just trying to protect me. I'm so scared I'll get sent back. I'm going to tell them the truth. You're doing the right thing. I'll speak to that. See you later. All right, Gorgeous. I was just sort of making an effort, I saw. Well, you look really smart. You should be really chuffed. I've still got about ten minutes, I think. Oh, well, that's why I came to find you. She's waiting in front of us. You're joking. No, 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 no. Oh, well, well, come in, come in, come in. Uh, well, you don't want to know how much you paid for it. Look at me. Keep laughing, yeah? <laughs> no, Mickey, you look great, trust me. And you're wearing your heart on your sleeve, so she won't be able to resist you. Now, don't keep your lady waiting. Go on. Oh. Good luck, gorgeous. Shut up. <laughs> See ya. Hello. Bit of an effort for Karen. Change plan. Come on. What's happening? 12 Clackett Drive, please, mate. My house? Yeah, we need to get too close. <laughs> what are you up to? 
We're going to the Aubrey Hotel and Club and we've got dinner booked for 8 o'clock. So we better get a shift on, Governor. You were right. About what? Pete. Me. The way I dealt with things today. And you were right. It was Esther. It's very noble of you. PC noble. <laughs> I'm sorry for taking things out on you. Yeah, I'll get you back. Next time I'm a period, I'll ask to work with you. I'm a nightmare. You fancy a pint? Uh, no thanks. I'm not really in the mood. Right. See you later. Hi, hi. Get out! Run for a drink. Yeah, two minutes. Out. Now you understand the conditions of your bail? Yeah, I do. If you just sign now, I'll get you properly. Hello, Don. Maggie. Look, I'm, I'm sorry. Ah, oh, don't be soft. Oh, look, I really should have told you that we was thinking about moving on. You don't have to answer to me. I'm not your mother. I really am very sorry. Maggie, did Mr Taunton drop the charges against you? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mind you, I think he spent too much time in that office of his. He should be thanking me for expanding his horizons. You're going to need a bed, aren't you? I mean, you can't really well spend the night in that burnt-out gaff of yours. Come on, then. I got the Z bed out. Steve, show him out, will you? Thanks. You all right? Yeah, I'm going to need a drink later. Oh. It's a good job. I've got some beers at home with your name on then, isn't it? Good. I'll see you right back. What is it now? I've just been at the station with Esther. She told me what happened. It was my fault. Not entirely. I ran after her. I scared her. I know. Yeah, she didn't mean to whip me so hard. Are you going to arrest me too? Esther doesn't want that. Why didn't you tell us? I love her. Look, I've just opened a bottle of red. Come in. It's probably best I don't drink it by myself. I think I was wrong about Diane. Yeah, why? Yeah, she ain't a lesbian. That's a shame. <laughs> oh, <hey. laughs> I can't believe that nobody else came. What a bunch of lightweight losers. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. Am I boring you? No, no, I wasn't saying that. It's nice to do this. Let's get slaughtered together. Well, we can have a big night then, aren't we? Well, we've already had five pints. I ain't stopping here. Well, where do you want to go? Got any ideas? Well, we can always go back to mine. I think Dan's got some cans in the fridge. Oh, we can do better than that. I've got a bottle of vodka in the freezer. All we'll have to do is get some mixers. Yeah? Yeah, that'll do for stars. <laughs> she used to really need me. Depend on me. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I liked it. I liked looking after her. Well, she strikes me as quite an independent woman. She is. Now. What changed? In Sierra Leone, I was army. Respected. Now I'm a security guard. Bottom of the food chain. I never realised that job status, you know, power, was so important to her. Maybe I was just a passport to the UK after all. No. She loved you when you got married. Why are you being so nice to me? <laughs> I don't know. It was definitely easier hating you and blaming you. It made me stop taking responsibility myself. 
Private Monroe's suicide was not your fault. As much mine as it was yours. <laughs> I didn't stand up for him. I didn't do anything. Exactly. You didn't do anything. But by not doing anything, I let it happen. I think we should stop beating ourselves up over this. What happened, happened. We've got to put it behind us. To moving on. Moving on. Next time on The Bill. We just brought a girl in, she wants to see her. Who is it? Carrie Morgan. I'm not talking to anyone except Mickey. Come on then. You're telling me you're not home now. Mm, ask me again in the morning. If I don't tell someone about me past, I'm lying to them. If I do, they don't trust me.